Okay, so this is a fresh bit of dung that you've turned over. And what are you telling me? So yeah, you can see at the moment it's uh, it's just really wet here and the dung beetles that we tend to get in Ireland really like this. So they, the adults will move around in the dung here. They'll sift tiny bits of particles out of the dung and that's what they feed on. Then just underneath the dung pat, they'll lay eggs and over time, the eggs will hatch into larvae who will move through the dung pat and feed on that over time as well. And which kind of dung, we have a series of different dung beetles in yeah. Ireland, which kind of dung beetle does this, is, is prefers this? This so is a tiny, tiny, itsy bitsy yeah, one. Yeah, they they tend to be less than one centimetre in length and you'll get lots of them crowding around in here and they're called aphodius, is the, the genus. And, and they would be teeny, teeny, like, I mean, they, they would, would vary be... from half the length of your nail to the length of your thumbnail. So they're quite small in comparison to the door beetle, that really large one, really which is almost an inch, an inch thick. Uh, so yeah, there should be so plenty of activity one. here soon. Ah, oh, very, so that's a fresh pot of manure. This one here is called? Aphodius rufipes. So this is a, a super abundant um, dung beetle that uh, occurs all over Ireland. And at this time of the year, it can be really, really abundant uh, on a nightly basis. It's a nocturnal dung beetle. And we found it here, just beside some dung that was on the ground. What it'll do is lay some, lay a clutch of about six to ten eggs on the ground underneath the dung pat, and over time they'll hatch and emerge and feed on the dung. Now, so there can be there can be thirty to fifty of these in an individual dung pat. Wow. Yeah, they can be really abundant, and we found it right beside this this hole here, which is belongs to. That belongs to the door beetle, the uh, Geotropes. Which is a really beetle. big... It's a really big one, about an inch, almost an inch in length. Uh, it's a pretty impressive beast. And, and this here, is directly under this pile of manure. We kicked it out of the way. Right yeah, there. so the, the female will... Uh, this is a burial chamber where, where they'll take dung down underground. And quite substantial amounts of dung, up to half a kilo. Wow. And bur bury it underground in these little chambers. So we better and give it back its yeah. dung. <laughs> uh, and it'll, it'll uh, lay eggs in those, the beetle will emerge and fly off, and then over time those eggs will hatch, develop larvae that are quite really substantially sized larvae now, they're pretty impressive beasts, and uh, eventually dig up through the soil and, and fly away and, and start the away. whole thing again. And when do, they, when do they hatch? They will or, hatch. sorry, when do they emerge from the soil? Uh, I think it'll be next spring when they'll, they'll emerge from the soil. Inca, are you, Inca loves digging sure. up ding, dung beetle nests. <laughs> She's very much. And then these are the people whose dung we've been kicking. So let's see if we can find, let's, let's kick this piece of dung and see if we can find anything under it. So, my God, I've, these are usually quite rare. So there's another one. There's another burial chamber. Yeah. Every single one of my dung pots, if we kick it over, there will be one of those. That's impressive. So those are considered rare? Uh, yeah, there's actually even a second one there. So there's two holes under, so you can see I've got a rather prolific population of a rare dung beetle. That's rather exciting. Oh, I'm very pleased to see that or hear that. This is a really fresh one. Let's kick and see if there's anything under it. So there's a hole there, which is likely, there may be one in it. Oh, there might be one actually in the dung. Okay, I don't see anything. No, there's something glossy. You see something? Oh, I thought I saw something. Oh, look, there's digging. Yeah, there's, so there's, digging. there's the digging activity. So it's just, we've just missed it, I'd say. We've just missed it, it's so just, it's just gone, gone in. underground. So cool. that's a very fresh, so we are really prolific with the, these with, geo tree, these door beetles, yeah. The, so the door beetles, so we've, he's replacing the dung on top of the hole, so it has its kilo of so, dung to bury. Housing scheme for a dung beetle. Yeah, housing, exactly, a very good housing scheme for dung beetles. Okay, so there's two, there's another species here. This is, um, where are we? Here's oh, another this? little red one, that's Ephodius fimitarius. Okay. So that's similarly lays eggs underneath the dung pat and these will hatch and produce more of these. It's getting to the, it's uh, not so abundant at this time of the year, but it's a beautiful. It's, it is a beautiful colored it's beetle. A beautiful red can you color. put it on your hands so sure. that we can see it? Oop, he's upside down. Yeah, it's beautiful red color. 
Oh wow. So it's quite a lot of them have this have this color and based on the color and the amount of the back that's uh, colored red, they're different species. So most of those Ephodias are actually about that size. The the one that we saw a moment ago is actually quite a large species. He's about to fly off. Oh, that'd be nice. Up. There's not enough dung on my hands for this fellow. No, he's gonna fly off. I love it. Uh, Even though I've made oh, it. Not, my, not quite. His wings are getting caught. Your fingers aren't helping. So now he's gonna try and dig. <laughs> <laughs> dig into your hand. So gone down into the dung. Yeah, it's great you're indulging in your dung beetle interest because I've got a great interest in it as well. Let's okay. see, this is fresh enough. There too, might be. Too fresh, I think. Is it too fresh for a dung beetle? There might be one that have landed in it. Okay, nothing yet. Nothing in there. But they're just everywhere. So the, the peak time for them is in uh, April, May. That's when you get most most abundance and most uh, especially for them emerging most diversity. Yeah, so you get about you get about eight or nine species at the one time around then. Well, I find these ones that are creating this soil here. Mm. These the what do you call them again? Uh, the, the door the door, beetle. door door beetle. They're most prolific this time of year in yes. their digging. Yeah, that's what I exactly. find. So this is when I don't harrow because I know they're being very prolific and in fact that's probably the key reason why you get so many of them because you can imagine it, that soil disturbance will kill all yeah. of those larvae underground so yeah. i'm basically being a good person in not harrowing when they're laying their nests certainly for a dung beetle yeah sure. no so i'm farming dung beetles <laughs> <laughs> this is an excellent example there's the big pile of dung and this is the dung beetles where it's dug all this stuff, isn't that right? That's it. So that's it's what it dug out. And I'd say if we went in under there, there's gonna be a hole. There it is, right there. There's the hole. And it li it's gonna go and burrow and uh, all this manure will go down under there. Gotta wipe our hands off of all this manure. Most people will be grossed out. I'm fascinated, not grossed out though. 